which it stands, one allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Attendance. Okay, we have any visitor comments tonight? Okay, Dr. Mann. Thank you, Mrs. Reinhardt. Just a few quick things. First, I want to extend congratulations to the class and families of 2023, including some members of our board here. Uh, it was a very dignified graduation ceremony with some great student speakers and musicians. Uh, thanks to Mr. Miller on his first graduation. And not for tonight, but a future topic for discussion will be the location of the 2024 graduation as we now have some options before us. So that's a teaser, uh, but uh, for future consideration. Uh, second uh, is that Mr. Pepe will be doing uh, some presentations on facilities later, but I, I do want to note and address uh, the roof situation at Liberty Bell that has been uh, a topic of, con of um, conversation here at our meetings, and it also has been a source of some email and concern from uh, our parents and community members. And so I, I need to say just with absolute clarity that there are no structural integrity issues related to the roof at Liberty Bell, none, okay? Uh, it's surrounded by a metal deck, uh, as is common with aging roofs, all right? Some of the insulation is soft, small bits of it, but the roof is functioning well. It is not leaking. Uh, it is just about where we would expect a roof at this stage of its lifetime is moving toward the end of its lifetime. Um, now, no question, the roof, and this was nobody's fault here, the roof was poorly designed, all right? Uh, it was not put in properly. And this fact is not helping us with some of the moisture issues. All right. Uh, the roof is on our list. We are monitoring it closely. We're not going to let it go. Uh, to the extent that there are leaks or things developing, we have internal capacity to do repairs. And just as we do not want to have a roof on longer than it should, we also never want to be in a position of taking roofs off years before they should be, because over time, that is a, a significant inefficiency and one that if spread across a large organization like, like a school district, uh, will have its substantial costs. And so, again, I, I think it's important. And, and while I am saying that, in response to some of these concerns, Mr. Pepe has reached out to um, the architects and uh, what we have known and have been saying has been actually verified by experts, which I believe uh, he distributed to the board members uh, earlier today and will be available uh, going forward. And then uh, that really are the, the only two uh, topics I have to address. We will be having an executive session later uh, for the purposes of uh, presenting on school safety. Uh, that executive session is mandated uh, by statute that each year uh, the administration provide an update on safety. We know the board is extremely interested and always interested in this topic and we look forward to um, presenting that, Dr. Trinkle, in executive session. So thank you, Mrs. Reynolds. As far as the items for facilities. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Mann. As far as the uh, facilities update, the roof, absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the most important takeaway was the uh, several spots that were uh, soft. However, the areas did not seem to be widespread or create any concerns regarding the structural integrity of the roof system. So at this point, we'll continue to monitor that roof system and plan accordingly as we're moving forward. Uh, the only other update on facility stuff was the uh, athletic stadium. You'll see there was an update that I had sent out this afternoon that is up and available 
on our website. That project is moving very nicely, and we just remain very pleased with what we see from the contractor, Athletic Fields of America. Very exciting. And that's all I have for that. Uh, budget and finance, I have a presentation. I'm going to uh, go ahead and see if I can link up there. Hang on. Lou, mm -hmm. just uh, we had an extensive conversation at the facilities meeting where uh, Michael Rohrbach had gone through the report, and I know you shared that with the board members earlier today in regards to the roof. And uh, just, a, a, I guess, a point that it's EI Associates that did that review, and we had discussed at the facilities meeting also making that report uh, once it's available uh, on those facilities website for any of the community members, the parents that wish to view it, it would be made available. So do you have a time for when that might be fully available, the full report would be available and posted? Yeah, it's it's simply like a, a field report with a couple of pictures. I can get that up tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Could I ask a question about that with the report? Is that the most recent report? Or are you talking about the report that was from like a year ago? No, we they, we said, they oh, thank looked at that the report. They, in conjunction with that report, they referenced it. Yeah. And they said they agree with the findings mm -hmm. because it was really the moisture barrier that yeah. was the consideration. However, we did an actual field observation where we went out there May 31st and actually of walked. this year? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we just did it. And went out, walked the roof, looked at everything. Roof's actually in pretty good condition, especially given the fact that it's already out of warranty. So as far as useful life, like Dr. Mann said, just because a roof is, you know, gone past the warranty, yeah. as long as it's still functional and we don't have the bucket brigade under there, there's no reason to do a rip off and repair. So when we were pressed on the timelines, I had stated that if we needed to, we could get it in the queue for the upcoming summer, but it may go into the following summer. And if everything stays exactly where it is, we may push it another year and continue to monitor it. So it's, it's really pretty good. Okay. And it was thorough enough that one of the things we also talk about is indoor air quality. Because whenever you talk about water and moisture, then the concern becomes that we don't have an indoor air quality problem with any potential mold. So Mr. Warbach has said, stated that all the indoor air quality monitorings that have been done, that are required to be done, have come back fine. We're going to expand that a little bit based on the areas that were identified in the report to make sure that that's still the case. And as long as we don't have any issues there either, then it'll just push it further. Okay, great. I just wasn't sure nope. if you were talking about the report from a year ago or the most recent. You're talking about making the most recent one, putting that up tomorrow? Great, thanks yep. so much. Okay, so this is actually a little bit exciting for me to talk about because this is something I've been looking at since I came to the district and that's managed print services. And this is an opportunity to look for a win-win type program where we can actually save money and improve efficiency throughout the district for all of our staff, as well as you know, central office building principals administration. So managed print services, reducing the print environment. What is managed print services? It's very simple, why? Because managed print services is designed to streamline copier management and minimize costs associated with printing and imaging. Analysis and review of our process, it was pretty detailed and it started, as I said, back in 2022. So back in 2022, I had requested Atlantic, a uh, copier company, to come in and assist in determining where all the equipment is throughout the district, how it's being utilized. And the reason I pulled them in is because it wasn't their equipment and I knew I was gonna get a, a fair and comprehensive response back. So then from there, I waited for the new tech director to come on board, and in September, we met in collaborative, through a collaborative effort to develop a plan for consolidation and elimination of printers. One of the things that I can tell you right off the bat is standalone printers have a very high cost associated with operation compared to a multifunctional copier device. So once we you know, had come to agreement on what really made sense, we reached out to Toshiba 
Now, I had reached out a year prior, but I think at one of the conferences you went to, you also got the rep, and we said we really need to meet and go over this. So early in March, we did, which led to having them do a detailed walkthrough on March 10th. They came back to us with a review of the district inventory that demonstrated an excess of printers, over 150 printers throughout the district, which just validated our findings. From that, they put together a response package of a five-year lease versus the current situation where we actually own all the equipment. The equipment that we have, some of those multifunctional device copiers go back to 2013. The last uh, capital purchase, four machines were purchased in 2019. We're looking at keeping those because they're relatively new and going forward and leasing re replacements for the rest. So we took it a step further and once we got their report together, we extended it, the RFP to Atlantic and also to Top Copy Business Solutions, another outfit. And we had actually asked for Canon machines and um, Canon and Sharp, and they preferred to give us Konica Minolta. So MPS helps improve efficiency, information security, reduce print costs, and lessen capital expenditures. So I came across this article that kind of showed what I was already going for, and that is what four industries are the perfect fit for managed print services. And number four is financial services. Number three was legal industry. Coming in at number two was healthcare. And number one industry is education for managed print services. It helps the following problems. Data confidentiality, which is one of the things that is starting to come up more and more with insurance renewals. Also workflow, print cost, and print waste. So setting our direction and scope, we basically have three strategies that we're looking to employ. The first one is improve the digital workflow. So these 17 new machines are not on top of what we have. They're replacing existing machines that we currently own that are at the end of their life. Uh, they're newer, faster, and less breakdowns. Rules-based printing, two-thirds of devices are typically underutilized in districts when you have a, a main uh, you know, big copier, but I have a printer on my desk, it's a lot easier for me to print to the printer, so I'm gonna keep feeding the printer, and the costs are a lot higher than going to the uh, multifunctional machine. Rules-based printing, I'm gonna go over in a minute. Device consolidation, we're looking at elimination of 58% of the standalone printers by reworking the workflow in the process of sending more of the copies to the larger machines. And with rules-based printing, it really comes down to double-sided versus single-sided, thinking about utilizing white versus color paper usage, black and white versus color printing, and printing to the most economical device and scanning instead of printing. Because more times than not, you can simply scan your document, even on a black and white machine, you can scan in color and attach it versus making extra copies that you're gonna hand out or use at a later date. So as far as the consolidation, we're looking to go from 150 printers and Chris and I have looked at this and Chris, with all the credit to him and his department, have gone through the schools to ensure what makes sense. We're not able to get rid of all the printers. Some printers we need to have based on where the information is or what's going on to it. A good example, checks. Checks have to go through a certain type of printer and we have a printer for that. But when we're done, we're gonna be down to 70 printers throughout the district. So the hidden cost of printers, typically, people see the tip of the iceberg. And when you look at printing, the hard cost, that's about 10%. That's the cost per page I was talking about, five to eight cents per page for black and white versus the multifunctional machines are printing at 0 .0004, less than a penny per copy. 
the color copies, if we're printed out of a standalone inkjet or laser printer, they can range between 12 to 15 cents, some even as much as 18 cents, depending on the uh, replacement of the cartridges and whatnot, versus a color copiers printing at about four cents per page. Supplies and maintenance, but that's what you see. What you don't see is about 90% of the mass, and that is below the surface, infrastructure and procurement. Infrastructure to ensure that we're able to handle all these printers on the local access network, and also procurement, purchasing and replacing the standalone printers as they go down. Uh, tech support, network administration. But here's a little bit of a deep dive to show you what we're talking about, the hidden costs. So replacement of these printers are 500 to $1,000 a printer for low capacity or 1,000 to 2,500 for high capacity. That's just for the actual printer. Then you have to look at feeding that printer. So parts and repairs are costly and they add delays. There's no control of the print job. There's an inability to secure documents before, during, and after the printing. We're gonna put an end to that by utilizing the multifunctional device machines. Loss of efficiency, less flexibility, and waste, the paper and inkjet cartridges that go along with these type of machines. So here's three quick facts about printing. Number one, if you don't know where the printers are really being used, if you don't know how they're really being used, then you can't control the printing costs. That's one of the biggest problems that we currently have without having managed print services. Number two, wasteful printing doesn't just harm the environment. It also impacts our school's operational costs and individual workflows. And third, when it comes to IT security, printing is often overlooked. So now we're moving into the money end. And Chris, if I miss anything on here, or you wanna add something, please jump right in and I'll bring this mic over to you. Thanks for the wireless mic. So the financial analysis of the agreement, I'm gonna start with where we currently are. Our current operational cost right now is running us in total about $5,587 per month. Um, I did give a handout to the board detailing out the proposals. All the numbers that are in there are in the presentation. So when we look at that, I look at the annual cost of $67,000 a year or over a five year term, if we continue to operate as we are, where we already own our, our own machines, we're still paying $351,000 over that five year period. Then take into consideration, these are the proposals to lease. So here you get all new equipment, faster, more productive equipment, and it's pretty much a replacement in kind. So in other words, if we have an 80 page per minute machine, we're gonna replace it with an 80 page per minute machine or a 90 page per minute machine. If there's a 35 page per minute machine, it's either gonna be replaced with a 40 page per minute machine or similar. We're not gonna go down, we're only gonna go up. And that is what we tasked these groups when they came in to give us our proposals. So if you see the bottom one, top copy, that was non-responsive regarding the equipment because they didn't do that. They actually gave us equipment that was not as fast or functional as what we were looking for. And hence, that's why you look at the $345,000 figure versus 378 or 393. So they're out. So now looking at the two that are still there, you're looking at 378 or 393 compared to 351. But you gotta consider replacement of machines. Even if we stay with what we own, a quarter are expected to go down over the next five year period. That's why if when we looked at our existing fleet, there's four that were purchased in 2019. So if we purchased another four machines at $15,000 a machine, that would be an additional 60,000 that we would expect to put out over the next five years. And that was verified by both of the companies that put in their proposals. So that would give us the total maintenance cost of 479,000 over the year. Therefore, both of these generate a savings. 
the first proposal represents $85,000 saved over five years. The Atlantic represents $100,000 saved over five years. For that fact alone, that's where our recommendation is going to be. But one of the things that we also looked at that's in the uh, handout is how they actually operate maintenance. We currently have one rep assigned to our district, and depending on you know what a day looks like with some of the equipment, they might not be able to get to a piece of equipment on a, on a given day. We've had you know concerns put forward from staff members from buildings. We addressed that with Toshiba, and the response from Atlantic. They had 22 techs assigned to Northampton and Lehigh County. One of the things I found in going through the proposal is the uh, sales rep, his, his boss is actually one of our residents who lives right around the corner, which also lends to some of the accountability. So for that reason alone, that was pretty much, you know, it made dollars and cents. Now, we also did meet with the association leadership to go over our plan and kind of where we're going and what we're looking to address. And I, not to put Matt on the spot, but Matt was wholeheartedly in agreement with where we were heading. Um, I think that that's pretty much it. It's a lot of information. I'm gonna open up to you guys if you have any questions. I had a quick question. Um, Will the counselors and I know the special education departments, they print a lot of very uh, sensitive materials. Will they still have access to their own or will there be a separate place for counselors and special education to be printing? Yes and no. So we, we already took that into consideration, same with the nurses, based on the information that they have. One of the things that we currently do not have that we're gonna put in place is um, code release. So if you have sent a document to the machine, you're gonna need to go to the machine, hit your four digit code, and then it will release your copies. So I can't pick your information up, and you don't have to worry if you printed something to the machine, and all of a sudden you get a phone call, and now you're sitting there saying, I have to run out and pick it up. So with print release, it will wait for you to come up to release the job. And one of the other benefits to that especially with administrators, they can be throughout the district depending on what's going on. So if building principals have a meeting with the curriculum office, they can send to our machine and release it from our machine, whatever they want it to print out, okay, for that particular meeting, as long as they're networked to the copier. Is that correct, Chris? Okay. My, my other question is, um, for uh, teachers, staff, everybody using the printers now in the capacity that they do use them, how does this upgrade change the normal flow? Like, is this a, a, is this a big inconvenience? Is it good for, like, or is everybody excited about this? Like, what does this do to the normal everyday activity for teachers? Well, one of the things that we're going to be having included in the machines with all the proposals was paper cut. And paper cut will enact our rules-based printing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in kind of soft. We're not going to monitor, uh, like we're not gonna give you a quota, like you can only print so much and once you reach your quota, you're done. Is that accurate also? I think that one of the, one of the answers to your question is, uh, matter of fact, I, I did an extra slide in case this came up. This is what it would look like. So rules-based printing, the administration and the tech director set up what those rules are. So like, take me for instance, they may not want me to print to a color copier, period. I may be restricted to black and white. That doesn't mean I can never print there, but I would have to get somebody to override that to allow me to do that. But whatever is in there is already set up for you know, the uh, school or the user. So then when the user tries to initiate a job, they're gonna wanna go to that local printer and if you see the red dot, what's gonna happen is the rules-based printing is gonna come up and they're gonna get a notification. Are you sure you wanna print to this printer? You should print to the larger machine like here. They would get a message saying, you know, user confirms recommendation, we recommend you print to the large 
uh, machine. So that, that way you make the conscious choice to print to the better machine as far as cost, but you're not precluded from printing to a printer if you need to. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm talk I, I was thinking more about the uh, convenience factor of like, just, just as an example, like I know, uh, just because I knew about it, at Liberty Bell, there, the PTA always did a copy committee where somebody would come in every day, they would make all the copies for the teachers, the teachers would leave in a bin with a little note saying, you know, make so many copies of this or whatever, and the copy committee would come in and copy all of that, and the teachers, it saved a ton of time for them. Now, what I'm hearing is then what they would be doing now instead is they would be sending the job to this printer and then when they want to go pick it up, they go, they scan their card or whatever, and it will release their print jobs. Is that? Yeah, that's correct. But it's it's also if that's how they how they want to go about their business. Like if they still had that copy committee, they could still do that in the main office area or in the copy room, wherever that happened to be. So those jobs can still happen. But in this case, we're trying to create a more secure environment for everybody involved with regard to that sensitive data where um, they would hit it and then it won't print out at a, at a specific given machine, at a copying machine. If, it's, if the job should go to that copying machine, it won't spit out until they go there. Eventually, we'll get into having our RFID cards that we would badge into the school with, um, where they would just go up and tap the card, and then it would release. But to keep things as secure as possible, um, they'll just go in, type a three, four-digit code in, and then at that point, a menu will pop up. They can push which job that they want to release. Um, and then they would they would get it then at that point in time. And to your example, if the building principal wanted to continue to operate that way, they certainly could, because you could turn around and have the print jobs still lined up, and you would simply go to the larger capacity machine, do the printing, and have them set up so the teachers could get them, you know, when they were done. So in in reality, what this does is it adds another layer of opportunity that currently doesn't exist. Okay, thank you very much. And I, on that point, Mr. no, 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 I, no, but it's a good point. It's a good point. Here, here's the thing, right? I, I, first, what I would tell you is, it, I mean, we're not going to say. I never do. I never do. No, no, no. I'm talking about like a seat. Right. No. Right. And, and I'm not right. I'm not going to dispute. Like, is it convenient to have a, a printer right next to you, right? Just hit print, pull it out, right? I have one that's going, all right? Chris, is, it's out. he took it off, right? Mine is going. But, it, but the, the, the point is we really do believe, right? Our, our teachers have been long suffering with the machines we have there. And the ones we have don't work. And so while, you know, we're going to have to get up and walk to the machine, the fact is these are going to work and they're going to be faster. And... And, and, and so, right, it, right. And, and, and to the extent that we find problems, we're going to work to fix them. So this is just like the days of having that thing next to you and, and then pulling out the cartridges. I mean, those, we all know that's just, and I'm grateful to Mr. Pepe and uh, Mr. Sun for their, their work. Yeah. But no, I was, it's I was, gonna be good. it's going to be, good. I was kidding. Um, and I do appreciate, but I mean, it's like, this is what's great about this administration is like there's just an example upon example of this type of um, what appears to be you know maybe I wouldn't call it minor but you know looking at all these smaller details um, and you know we have some savings here and then you just see this over and over again and, and we save all that money and some of it comes back to the taxpayer and some of it comes back to extra teachers or or things that go towards uh, you know our education for our kids um, and so I think it's it's just spectacular so I mean I was I was obviously kidding around a little bit um, but uh, I'm very thankful yeah I'm being so much truthful I am that person but I am very thankful for the for the hard work Lou and and I'm not, I know I'm just not Lou uh, and, and the team so I think it's great thank you no agree thanks thanks for the presentation it's a great idea and a great cost savings no and thanks Chris for all the work you guys did to help with that because 
Chris is the one going out to all the buildings, looking at all the machines. And when somebody complains about their printer being gone, I will send them to Chris. <laughs> well, then maybe I don't know who I should direct this question to, Mr. Suma, Chris over there, or <laughs> Mr. Pepe. But then um, with talking about like your printer's going and your printer's going, you're walking is great for your health. I heard those comments. They're all great. Can we assume that although the number of printers throughout the district will be significantly reduced to, you know, have this co great cost savings, will there, um, and there will be centralized hubs then for copying, but certain buildings, like I, I know we've just talked about Liberty Bell, that's one floor, but certain buildings like the intermediate school has two, you know, floors separated by a glass corridor and, and the high school has different floors. Will there at least be, although there won't be, you know, the same sprinkling of printers throughout, will there still be hubs so that on each basic central floor of each building. So it's not like, you know, three floors or two floors to a building they'll all have to go to. I'm, I'm seeing nods that yes, there will at least be. Exactly, that was my only question. No, and, and we, wanted to, we wanted to make sure that we're operationally sufficient to do what we need to do. Right. So the first pass of the reduction of printers actually came from one of the uh, companies that came in to, to walk through and look at what their recommendation would be. But then we went out to field verify whether or not we were in agreement. And like anything else, you know, you can always adjust. If we find that there's a situation where, uh, you know, maybe we, re we really did need a printer in this particular location, we would just add one back. Right, right. And you're okay. saying you're saying that teachers or you were talking to union uh, represent you, they were saying they were involved in that, you know, field study kind of on the. N no, not not in the study as far as that's concerned. It's kind of like if I walked up and asked everybody, can I take your printer? Well, What's yeah. the answer going to be? Well, yeah. No, I yeah. need that. Right, right. But as Dr. Mayen said, this is district wide. So like even even in the business office, I went through and they were informed that printer's going that. And the first reaction is. Uh, but but I print all day there. Well, you know what? You're going to print, but you're going to walk over to here. And I, I took a picture today to kind of demonstrate what we were talking about. It was, it was really hilarious because there's two printers. There's a printer and a copier, and they're only separated by a doorway and the office. And it's actually where Ming Jing is. So here's one of those big printers we want to take away. And on the other side of the wall is the big giant copier. As long as that printer is there, there's no reason for them to print to the bigger copier. They're going to print here all day. And, you know, in our, in our office, it's the same thing. So it, it's a change in the culture. But it's kind of like, you know, I always say to people, when you start a job, you come in and they say, where do you print to? You tell them, oh, all right, over here in the print room, they get up and go get their copy. The problem is when you have a printer that you feel belongs to you, and it really belongs to the district, and it's no longer an option, it, you get used to it. But I think we're going to be fine. Thanks. Sure. Um, again, this is one of the items that we were painstakingly trying to ensure that we had availability of quickly because of the time schedule with the project. So on the HVAC project, we talked about the chillers. We already approved that. We're getting that through a co national cooperative. When it came to the smaller rooftop units, a 60 ton, based on the design, EI Associates had gone through all the major players and determined that the Aon unit was the unit that they were representing to us as the, as the best fit for our particular project. And one of the biggest reasons is we do not have to retrofit the ductwork. We can utilize the existing ductwork, so it's going to save us a, a ton of money in that respect. So now it's a matter of procurement and how do we purchase this unit. Well, the company Aon works through uh, preferred distributors, and the preferred distributor for our area is HC Nye. Company, HCNI company is also on the state contract, CoStars. Therefore, we do not have an issue with procurement that way. So they just got their CoStar stuff straightened out, and we got the proposal back. And we would like to have action on this so that we don't lose any time in getting the unit ordered. That's pretty much it.
Thank you. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave.